look at modern psychology. The minute you go to a psychologist, what does the psychologist want you to do? He wants you to remember the problem. And, and tell it over and over and over and over and over again, which I mean, you, you never get rid of it if you do that. Exactly. And they continue to tell the, the whole story over and over and over again. And one of the questions that came in was, I, I don't really understand um, what, what he meant by that. How in the world can a person stop, just stop telling the story? The way you stop telling the story is you change the words. You see, thoughts become words. Words become actions. Actions become habits, and habits harden into character. So the thought pops up. What you do is you begin to tell the story differently. First of all, don't say I or I am, because when you do that, you become highly motivated towards your goal. So if you say, if a person says, I, I am tired, cancel, cut, delete, and clear. Mm -hmm. I have, you know if I had to stop it? I had to stop that so oh, it wouldn't you've become got to, you've got to You've got to do the cancel, cut, delete, clear. You've yes. got to explain that. I've been using it for 30, 40 years now. Well, what you do is you're changing the velocity of your thought. You're slowing it down. You're pulling it back. Okay, so when you have one of your words are actual things. Okay, so so let me just explain it the way that I've been doing it. When you have a thought that you know you are that that is holding you back, you know, say that you were abused by a family member, and that thought comes in and you're feeling really bad. What I do is I take my two fingers and I put quotation marks around it, and then just as you said, I cancel, cancel, then I erase it, I delete it. And if it comes up again, I do the same thing. Now, is that the same thing that you're talking about? Same thing. Because you're a genie once again. That's right. Whatever your heart's desire is is what you get. So when you say I or I am, the genes in your body begin to create for you what it is you're desiring. They're listening to you. You're in charge. So let's say I've had a terrible childhood, and I feel like I'm about to talk about it again. Mm -hmm. Here's what you do. You say, number one, my childhood was challenging. The minute you say challenge, the subconscious mind says, oh, this is a challenge. This is something that is challenging us. It's something we can get over. It's a challenge. You see? Mm -hmm. Then you begin to tell the story, but don't say I. If it's a female, then you say she. Talk about the little girl and point away at an inanimate object as if she's over there. Right. Don't touch yourself each time and don't say I was or because when you begin to move away from pointing towards yourself, the subconscious thinks you're talking about somebody else. And once you're not talking about you, your cells move into a what they call growth mode or love mode and they begin to create new healthy cells because there's no alert that we have a problem. It's somebody else. So you might say, she was abused or she was such and such. And when she was five years old, you could tell the whole story. Just say she. And you could you start off by saying, or whatever the problem was, say, my life has been a challenge in the past. Make sure you say in the past. Right. Because the, the, that's a command word. It says, this is not happening now. It's happening in the past. Because when you tell this story and bring it into the moment as if it's happening now, the subconscious doesn't know time. The subconscious only knows the moment. So it goes and grabs those file cabinets of those terrible memories and brings them into the moment. The cells of your body cannot do two things at one time. They're either moving towards growth, which is cell mitosis, or what's also called love. They're making new healthy cells or they're in protection mode. Blood flow is diverted from digestion and your defense, or what some people call an immune system. And blood flow goes to the back of the brain, 
to the muscle because you're now in fight or flight mode. Adrenaline begins to pump. You see, cortisol begins to pump into your system because there's an emergency happening right now because your subconscious doesn't know that you're talking about something from the past because you're speaking of it as it's happening now. So all you have to do is say, in the past, she, take it off of you, or he, take it off of you. You see, your cells begin to realize that this is just talk about something that happened to someone else. It's very simple. But once you begin to use this technique, it works very well because your subconscious is a huge tape recorder. It doesn't filter information. Your subconscious just records every event, every smell, every touch, every vision, every word. It just records everything. Now, what decides which file cabinet it gets put in? Because there's file cabinets that are right up front that are really important has to do with the amount of emotion that you put into the memory. So if you have a very emotional memory and you keep rubbing or massaging or talking about that terrible thing as if it's happening now, then that file is right up front in the file cabinet. This creates stress. See, the average American is stressed out Absolutely. because all of their stuff is in the wrong file cabinet. Because of our language. Look at modern psychology. The minute you go to a psychologist, what does the psychologist want you to do? He wants you to remember the problem. And, and tell it over and over and over and over and over again, which I mean, you, you never through. get rid of it if you do that. Exactly. 